What is up, everybody? I hope you guys are all doing well. I got a really good video for you guys lined up today. We're going to be going over why Bitcoin is the apex asset in the playing field of assets. So basically, long story short, you have two things in this world. You have an asset, you have a liability. A liability is something that takes money from your pocket. Think of a car, think of a house, think of a yacht, something that you have to continually pump money into for you to maintain it. And it takes and drains money from you, economic energy from you. Whereas an asset, on the other hand, is something that puts money in your pocket. Now, I did say real estate is a liability. On the other hand, it could be an it could be an asset depending on the actual property itself. There are some instances where real estate is actually a liability. If you, if you think about houses that are, let's say, five years ago, people lived in Ukraine. Ukraine got invaded by Russia. Those houses, those people had to flee. They can't take their house with them and cross borders. So that house is a liability. Who is going to want to live in that war zone? It's just not such a good investment. It's something you can't take with you. Is that on the spectrum? I don't think so, because I think you could get to a point where even if you own this house outright, you still have to pay property taxes. You still have to pay HOAs. You still have to pay your maintenance and utilities on the property. So it's always holding costs with real estate. So that's why I kind of group it into actually a liability for the most part. Now, obviously, you're going to say, OK, but it, it goes up in value. That's only because we've monetized houses in the long run. House prices will go down as a lot of the houses are actually being used as stores of value. People buy investment properties, rental properties to preserve their wealth. That money is going to be sucked out and it's going to be put into the apex property, Bitcoin. What makes Bitcoin so much better compared to any asset? I just mentioned real estate, but you have stocks. Stocks are just businesses, underlying businesses that you have ownership in. There's risk involved with owning a business, obviously. Anything could go wrong. Collectibles, let's say Rolex watches. Obviously, there has to be a demand for those. And let's say the demand for Rolex watches just overnight went through the roof 10x. In theory, what the Rolex company could do is just issue more Rolexes, is buy a new manufacturing plant and pump the supply of Rolexes up, causing the price to eventually come down. Now, that is something you definitely do have to get through your mind is supply and demand. That is really what investing is. That is really what economics is. If you boil it down, we have this new asset class that is emerging and that is taking the world by storm. And it's called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is so unique because it is truly scarce and is truly finite, meaning that there are only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins. Now, you really have to come to grasp with that statement right there that there are only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. If you just do some quick numbers, guys, quick numbers, there's 60 million millionaires on this planet. Even if every millionaire woke up tomorrow and wanted to just own one Bitcoin, it is mathematically impossible for one for every millionaire to own one Bitcoin, not alone the billionaires. Now, taking a further step back, there are about 8 billion people on this planet. And Bitcoin has been around for 15 years and its distribution has been quite interesting as retail investors, everyday people like you and I have gotten in before the big money. So you have a lot of people on this planet that actually own very large amounts of Bitcoin that mathematically they're taking that Bitcoin away from millions, if not billions of people. And those people that own a lot of Bitcoin are positioning themselves so nobody else can own as much Bitcoin as them. It's just game theory. It's just math. So that's one of the biggest things with Bitcoin is its finite supply. You really have to understand that in economics. And it's new. This is a new technology. Like I said, it's only been around for 15 years. So it's going to take time. It's going to take time for people to understand this. But I really think we're going to go from the gradually and then just suddenly adoption rate. Right now, we're relatively in the gradually adoption curve, if you will. But soon, I think it's going to go suddenly because you're not going to be able to ignore Bitcoin 
it's going to be a lifeboat as we experience more and more inflation, possibly hyperinflation in the United States. The United States is the world superpower, if you will. And even in the U.S., we're dealing with some pretty high inflation. Not as bad as some other countries out there, but obviously it's people are starting to feel it. People are starting to wake up and be like, what the hell? Like things are getting expensive. So you're going to have to look for something to be able to shield yourself from that inflation. Now, why is it such a good asset? Why is it the apex asset? It's because it is truly digital, it's truly scarce, and it's supply and demand curve. Let's talk about that. So there will only ever be 21 million coins. With that, Bitcoin is just computer program, computer software. You can go read the white paper if you'd like, written by Satoshi Nakamoto. So we're actually about to go through the halving next month. Depending on when you're watching this video, April 20th of 2024 is going to be the Bitcoin halving. And we're going to go from 900 new Bitcoin a day to 450 per day. So the supply of Bitcoin is going to be cut in half without anybody saying yes, anybody saying no. Bitcoin is not run by anybody. Bitcoin is a set of rules without rulers. There are no rulers. There's no CEO of Bitcoin. So it's, it's very interesting. Bitcoin is a commodity. Bitcoin is the apex asset. So with the supply going down, we just recently got the ETF approval with BlackRock, with Fidelity, ARK Invest. It's nine companies, but the big two are BlackRock and Fidelity, and they are buying over 10,000 Bitcoin per day. Per day, guys, you can look this up. So the demand for Bitcoin is going through the roof. And like I said, with a Rolex watch, with gold, with anything tangible, we could, in theory, just produce more of them when the demand goes up. That is not the case for Bitcoin. The demand for Bitcoin tomorrow could 100x. It could literally 100x Apple, Amazon, Google, nations, countries, Everybody on this planet could wake up tomorrow and just be like, yeah, we need to buy some Bitcoin, guys. The demand could go through the roof. And guess what? The supply is staying the same. The supply is actually going to be cut in half here soon without anybody being able to vote on it. It is very powerful. This technology is profound. It's going to take time for people to understand this. And that's why I'm here and I want to educate the world on this technology because it is going to have a major impact. And I was reading a comment. I don't know who it was. Somebody on one of these videos commented and he was saying that his land, his land, he's an investor in land, bought it 10 years ago. Cool. He made some money. I think he said he 10 X, which I, I mean, sure. What makes Bitcoin superior to even that land is OK, bud. let's say you have to flee. Let's say there's a war out in front of your your land things get hectic there's a civil war there's civil unrest you can already feel it i don't know where your land's at bro but if it's in the united states tensions are high guys tensions are definitely high i mean there's a lot of political unrest so what i was going with even if it's land if it's real estate if it's anything physical it's harder to move it's something you literally have to move and land you're not moving that's something that's staying there, a house you can't pick up. And if you have to leave, you can't take it with you. Whereas Bitcoin is just information. Bitcoin is literally just an idea. The powerful thing about Bitcoin is that it can live in your head. If you can remember, basically think of it this way, your password, your seed phrase, 12 to 24 English words, you could, in theory, walk around this planet with billions of dollars in your head, all your life's energy just in your head. Nobody can take it from you. Even if you die, even if somebody has a gun to your head, nobody can take your Bitcoin from you. So it's very radical as in, let's say that this watch right here is worth $10 billion. In theory, somebody would just snatch the watch off your wrist. I mean, they'd be like, give me the watch. You wouldn't be able to do much. Whereas with Bitcoin, if they want your $10 billion in Bitcoin, the best path moving forward would be would be some form of negotiation, because if they kill you, 
they're not getting anything. So Bitcoin promotes voluntary, peaceful trade at its core. If you really start to think about game theory, in the Bitcoin world, every transaction, every trade, trade is just communication. Every trade is has to be grounded in being voluntary. There would be no involuntary trades with Bitcoin because you cannot get the next person's Bitcoin. So that paradigm right there just blew my mind when I started to really go down the rabbit hole. So it's literally going to make war a thing of the past as time progresses, as we do move to a Bitcoin standard. And it's it's game theory as one opponent, one player has the advantage right now. One nation, a smaller nation, let's say El Salvador, they went on a Bitcoin standard. They own a nice chunk of Bitcoin. The dominoes are falling. El Salvador was the first to fall soon another nation will fall then after that another nation and it's going to continue to build and build until eventually all nations are on a bitcoin standard because if your neighboring nation is on a bitcoin standard and you're not you're going to be left behind right now bitcoin is being treated as a store of value but bitcoin can be built on top of you can build layers on top of the bitcoin network if you're not familiar the layer two the lightning network is a way that you can zap small amounts of Bitcoin at basically an instant to anybody on this planet. So when it comes to, let's say, buying your coffee or buying your whatever, you're able to zap somebody some money for that. And we already live in a digital world. If you think about the last time you went to the grocery store, the last time you want to go fill up your car, the last time you bought basically anything under a thousand dollars, it was a digital transaction. Either you pulled out a little piece of plastic or you pulled out your phone and you just tap your phone on some magical sensor and then bam, a transaction occurred. So we're already moving to a digital world. Everything is digital. School is digital. You're watching this video on the internet digitally. Like the last missing link is money. Money is the foundation of civilization and it's going to usher in this Bitcoin renaissance and it's happening. It's literally already happening. So you watching this video right now, you're very early. I'm very excited for the times ahead and I'm, it gives me hope for the future, for a better future. And just to show you guys, since we'll go use the layer two network right now to send somebody some actual Bitcoin. So an app that I've been playing with, my phone screen might be a little dirty. An app that I've been playing with right now is called Primal. This is the Noster app. And I'm not 100% familiar with it. I'm still learning about it, but it's pretty fucking cool, guys. Like you can, so it's a social media app built on the Bitcoin network right above the being on the base layer of the Bitcoin is on the Lightning network. So let's, here it is. It's like Twitter. Think of Twitter, guys. Scroll, scroll, scroll. You can see some cool stuff. There's no ads. This is this is the future, guys. My link will be in the description. So go follow me on Noster. I do post on there. So we're going to go to, I don't know. We'll go to this guy. So there's the, there's the tweet or the whatever. And right there, boom. I just sent him 21 sats. So 21 sats, 21 Satoshis, I just went ahead and sent him. Boom. There was no middleman. There was no bank. He instantly got that probably two seconds after I sent it. That was a trade. I just sent him economic energy money to him. And that's going to change the future, guys. <laughs> That is insane. Literally like 1.5 billion people on this planet don't have access to a bank. And did I not just send him money? So, and to set up that account, I did not need a bank. I did not need a social security number. I did not need none of that. You set up your account using a private and a public key. When you sign up, you get access to your private key is made. And that's something we will definitely talk about. You don't want to put your private key out there because anybody that has that key can get into your account and access your account. And then you have your public key. Now, your public key is what I have in the description of this video. That is how the public 
interacts with your account. It's powerful stuff and Bitcoin is not just money, it is a idea that represents truth, that represents reality, that represents math <laughs> mathematics. It represents a lot and it represents freedom, property rights for all. It's something that I really truly feel we should be educating the world on because that is the biggest holdup for this Bitcoin hyper Bitcoinization is what people call it is when we just spiral into when the black hole of Bitcoin just sucks everything in that that right there is literally just waiting to happen it is is waiting on people's understanding of Bitcoin to change and evolve as people start to become more aware, start educating themselves on this technology, start watching videos like this. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. So that's what I'm trying to do in this Bitcoin world. I'm just trying to spread the Bitcoin word. So share this video with somebody, share it with a friend, share it with somebody who, whoever you want to. I appreciate that. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Bitcoin is the apex asset. It's something we're definitely going to continue to talk about because it takes time to really just grasp this and to really get a good grassroots understanding of this technology and once you do and once you get on a bitcoin standard and once you have your economic energy in bitcoin you can start to think about the future you can start to plan for the future bitcoin is a savings technology it is the best savings technology ever made ever invented ever discovered whatever you want to say it's literally the best and it's going to it's going to propel humanity forward like nothing else. This is this is the most cr crazy technology ever invented by man. So very excited for the future. With that being said, I hope you guys like this video. Remember, stay humble, stack sets, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.